I have to admit that I was both right and wrong about the iPad Mini 6. It was the first iPad that I used in the past few years that didn't make sense to me before I got it. I was convinced that between my iPhone and the larger iPads, there just wouldn't ever be a situation where I would want to use it, so I didn't really understand the demand. But I read a ton of your comments, like literally almost every single one, so I could tell that so many people were excited about it. And even though I already had the iPad Mini 5, I had to test this one out for myself. So after three months of use, here are the good news, the bad news, and I'm also going to give you my recommendations about which one to get. And thank you to Best Buy for sponsoring this video. From a design standpoint, I'm super happy with this iPad. Like the previous version version looked like a miniature version of my iPad Air 2. It has the larger bezels on the top and the bottom, the older style home button, and then the lightning connector at the bottom. With the iPad Mini 6, Apple upgraded the design to mirror that of the iPad Air 4 with smaller bezels all the way around, rounded corners, squared off edges, and a USB-C port. I like this design with the iPad Pro, I like it with the iPad Air 4, and over the past three months, I've super enjoyed having it on the iPad Mini 6. I think that it both looks great and feels really comfortable to hold for viewing content and for gaming. Now in terms of the overall footprint, I like that it's 0.03 inches or 0.08 centimeters shorter, but the display is actually 0.4 inches or about a centimeter longer. This somewhat alleviated my first objection of it being too close to my phone because it's pretty much like two and a half times the size of the display that I have on the iPhone 13 Pro. And I say somewhat because when it comes to something like multitasking, it's still not a huge display. And I would opt for one of the larger iPads instead. But if I compare it to my phone, then I would definitely choose the iPad mini 6 every time. I mentioned this in my previous video, but this is a perfect example of why it's important for you to think about how you plan on using your device before buying it. This way you're buying a device that fits your needs and it's a great deal so it fits your budget. And speaking of great deals brings me to today's sponsor, Best Buy and their top deals. Whether you're shopping during the holidays or looking for great prices any time of the year, make sure that you first visit the top deals section of the website where you can find the best deals Best Buy offers. I was looking for a new TV and I found a 70 inch LG 4K Smart WebOS TV for 750 bucks. And if that's too small for your space, first of all, congratulations. And second of all, they have 85 and 86 inch TVs for under 1600 bucks, which is bananas. A friend of mine just told me that she was looking for a gaming laptop, and I was checking out some extremely powerful options from Alienware, Asus, MSI, Razer, and several other manufacturers. A lot of times you can also find open box items that are even more heavily discounted. There are a ton of product categories, including video games, Apple products, headphones, cell phones, tablets, major and small appliances, fitness, and a lot more. We're having work done on our kitchen, and lately I've been checking out their selection of coffee machines looking for the right one. So if you're in the market for some new gear, home appliances, or a lot of other consumer electronics, but don't want to pay full price, check out Best Buy Top Deals for some great discounts, and thank you again to Best Buy for sponsoring this video. Now back to the iPad mini, the display quality was another area where I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to get. It is a higher resolution display than the previous version, it's a little narrower, but it's longer. Again, it's a fully laminated display so there's no air gap and the image looks like it's painted right on top of the glass. This display has been really good. I've watched lots of videos on it and I spent hours and hours playing games. I've had some people say that they would want to have ProMotion, which is Apple's adaptive refresh rate of up to 120 hertz. This feature is currently limited to the 11 and 12.9 inch iPad Pro and I think that it would probably crush the battery life on this smaller device. It's also gonna be interesting to see when Apple decides to bring this feature to iPad models other than the Pro. Now something else that I wasn't sure about was how the whole jelly effect was gonna play out. Just in case you don't know what I'm talking about, it's something that you can notice if you're holding the iPad mini in portrait mode and you're scrolling. Basically because of how the display refreshes, when you're scrolling vertically, at certain speeds you could see that straight horizontal lines appear to have a slight angle to them. And if you keep going up and down, it creates sort of like a rolling shutter effect, which camera nerds like me will immediately understand. I feel like at this point, I have a large enough sample size to say that it's definitely there, I do notice it, and I wish it wasn't there. Now, at the same time, it's not something that really interferes with what I do, and it doesn't happen in landscape mode at all. There was some discussion about this being corrected with an update, but I can tell you that nothing has changed since I got it. So ultimately, it depends on your perspective. Now that you know about it, you're gonna notice it. This device is gonna last you for a lot of years. So if you think that every time you look at it, it's going to bother you, 
don't get it. Personally, it's not gonna be an issue for me with anything that I do on it. But if you're really worried, go to a store and test it out before buying it. Now, as far as battery life, I've been really surprised with how well the iPad mini has performed. It's the smallest iPad that Apple makes, so I expected it to have the worst battery of all my iPads, but that wasn't the case. I recently did a battery test of all the current iPads. I used them for watching YouTube, Netflix, for gaming, for recording video, and I was really surprised by the results. So if you're interested in seeing how the iPad mini 6 compares to the iPad 9, the Air 4, and the 11 and 12.9 inch iPad Pro, I'll link to that video at the end of this one. Another upgrade that I've enjoyed is the newer biometric authentication with Touch ID integrated into the power button. So I've said this before, man, I don't really mind the old style home button, but the newer implementation means that we can have smaller bezels all the way around. It's one less button because we don't need the power button and it's worked really well for me. Like I don't really remember any time where it's had any issues recognizing my fingerprint. I still would like to see Face ID as an option. So for example, on something like my Tab S7 or S7 Plus, I have both options, which is super convenient. Now I wanna talk about a weakness and a strength of this iPad. When it comes to multitasking, I have to say that it's not a major strength of the iPad mini 6. The resolution is high enough, and like I said, it's significantly bigger than my phone, but if that was your primary use case for getting a tablet, this wouldn't be my first choice. I would still use it over a phone, but even something like the iPad 9 with a lower resolution feels bigger. Now gaming is absolutely awesome on this iPad. Now this is another area where I was wrong by thinking that the experience would feel like a phone. It definitely doesn't. It's almost like holding a Nintendo Switch without the physical controls, of course, but there's something that just feels right when you're holding it in landscape mode. With my iPad 9, the Air 4, or the 11-inch iPad Pro, you definitely feel like you're playing on a tablet. And with the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, it's even bigger, so it can get uncomfortable during longer gaming sessions. Now the iPad mini 6 has been great for PUBG. It's light, it's portable, and it's comfortable to hold for long periods of time. It has speakers on both sides, so you can hear where footsteps are coming from, but I'm pretty much always going to be using headphones or a headset because it's such a better user experience. Now sometimes I play games with a controller, whether it's with the Xbox Game Pass app, Apple Arcade, or other games like COD Mobile which require a controller. Now in those situations I can still use the iPad mini 6 and it works great but if that was the primary way that you plan on gaming on a tablet I would probably look at one of the larger iPads. At that point you're only using the iPad as a display and you might as well get a larger one where everything is easier to use. Now as far as accessories it's a bit of a mixed bag. When it comes to keyboards if you watched my favorite iPad mini 6 accessories video you saw that I would definitely look at an external keyboard keyboard. I don't really get a keyboard case for my iPads. I've used a Magic Keyboard, several options from Logitech, and a few other brands. But the one keyboard case that I tried for the iPad mini 6 was so small and it very quickly became uncomfortable to type on. It's not really a knock on that case. There's only just so much that you could do with this width. When it comes to the Apple Pencil, I love that the Mini 6 is compatible with the second generation Apple Pencil. It's great that it pairs wirelessly and then it stores and charges on the side of the device. And it works great with the fully laminated display because there is no air gap. Now, the Apple Pencil is also a reason why I didn't go with the Apple case and instead I chose one that has a clasp that protects the Apple Pencil from falling. And if you want to see a complete list of the accessories that I use, watch this video right here. I also continue to appreciate the move from lightning port to USB-C. That leaves the iPad 9 as the only current iPad with a lightning port. The issue is that every model of the iPhone 13 still uses lightning, as does every model of the AirPods, including the third generation AirPods and even the AirPods Max. And let me know in the comment section if you think that we're still going to see newer Apple products with lightning ports or if you think that they'll finally make the move to USB-C. I already talked about the speakers. They work well for gaming and they also do a good job if you're watching videos. And I guess it comes down to what you're comparing it to. They're definitely better than my iPhone 13 Pro. They're better than the iPad 9, but not as good as the iPad Air 4 or either 11 or 12.9 inch iPad Pro. For me, the speakers are not really a major factor because I'm going to be wearing AirPods pretty much the whole time that I'm using the iPad mini 6, especially since they automatically switch between my phone and any of my Apple devices. Now, as far as the cameras, the rear facing camera is good enough, but I pretty much never use it. The one that I do end up using a lot of time is the front facing one because of center stage. It's a feature that uses the 12 megapixel ultra wide camera and artificial intelligence to identify and then track a subject as it moves through the frame. 
It then zooms in and out to keep the subject in frame and gives the appearance that the camera is following it. Now, since none of the iPhone 13 models have this feature, I end up using the iPad mini 6 for my FaceTime and Zoom calls. So after three months of use, would I recommend this update and which model would I recommend? Personally, I think it's a fantastic iPad if you're looking for a very powerful and super portable option. It's such a fun iPad to game on, it has good battery life, an upgraded form factor, a USB-C port, good speakers, and center stage for video calls. It comes in 64 and 256 gigabyte models, and Apple has absolutely outstanding long-term OS update support. And my iPad Air 2 that I got in 2014 is still supported by iPad OS 15. So the iPad mini 6 should last you for a long time. Now because of that, I would seriously consider upgrading to the 256 gig version, especially if you like to play a lot of big games that are gonna take up a ton of storage. Now remember that games continue to evolve, they release new graphics, effects, and maps, and you don't wanna have to replace your device just because you run out of storage. If you're not playing a lot of games or using larger apps, then storage isn't that much of a concern, especially since now with LumaFusion and the USB-C port, you can edit videos directly off of an external SSD without needing to fill up the internal storage of your iPad. Now you should see how the iPad mini 6 compares to the other iPads in my battery drain test. Hopefully this video was helpful. Click on my face to subscribe. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.